Hello everyone, today we're going to go over your recursive implementation of pre-order, in-order, and post-order traversal. So let's get started. Also, if you're new here, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and most importantly, click that notification bell for updates. So the three techniques we're going to discuss today are known as depth-first search techniques. And that's because we're going to traverse as far down a path as we can before moving back up the tree. And that'll become very clear as we go over the animations. So the first technique we're going to look at is called pre-order traversal. And in this technique, we visit the root, then we visit its left subtree, and then its right subtree. Next, we're going to look at in-order traversal, where we visit the left subtree, then the root, and then the right subtree. And finally, we're going to look at post-order traversal, where we visit the left subtree, then the right subtree, and finally the root. Now, please keep in mind the recursive definition for a binary tree as we approach these methods. And as a recap, the recursive definition says that a binary tree consists of a root node, a left subtree, and a right subtree that are also binary trees. Now, a really easy way to remember pre-order, in-order, and post-order traversal is to think of the prefix in the names. If you look at pre-order, pre means before, so the root node is visited before the left and right subtrees. For in-order, think of the root as a being in between, so the root is in between the left and right. And for post-order, think of after, so the root is visited last. We visit the left, the right, and finally the root node. Now, to remember left then right, I think just think of the word order and the natural flow of things. So things naturally tend to flow from left to right. Think of like writing on a piece of paper. You're most likely gonna write from the left going to the right. Or think of a progress bar on your computer. It grows from the left to right. So that's a really easy way to remember it. Now, let's take a look at the tree class that we will be implementing these methods inside of. So here we have a tree node class that will represent our entire binary tree. So we have three instance variables. We have our data that will be associated with every node in our binary tree. We also have our left and right reference variables that will be the left and right subtrees respectively in our binary tree. We also have a constructor here that takes in some argumented data that will be used to initialize our instance variable data with. Now let's get to the actual implementation of these methods. So the first method we're going to look at is pre-order traversal. As we remember, pre means before. So we're going to visit the root, then its left subtree, and then its right subtree. Now let's just go over the layout that we have here. So on the right hand side I have the call stack that will show the current node that we're at as well as all previous stack frames in our call stack at any given point in time. Now for our binary tree, I will use yellow to show where we are at any given point in time in our binary tree as we go through the method. And finally, on the top left, we have the actual method that we'll be going through step by step as we approach each node in the binary tree, as well as the output on the top right. Now, my goal here is to really make sure that everyone can understand this, so I try to include as much as I can to help you figure out exactly what's going on as we go through it. Now, if, suppose, for example, I was my main method, and the name of my tree node was called root, then I can call root.preorder to actually run this method. And at that point, my AD will get pushed to my call stack. And going to the first line of my method, I print the data associated with my node 80. So I print 80. Then I check if its left subtree is not equal to null. And since 80 subtree's left subtree is not equal to null, I can call preorder on its left subtree. And again, 40 gets pushed to my call stack, and then I print the data associated with my current node, which is 40. Then, just like before, we checked if our left is not equal to null. Since 40's left is not equal to null, I can call preorder on 40's left subtree. So 20 gets pushed to my call stack, and then I print the data associated with my current node, which is 20. Then again, we check if our left is not equal to null. Well, 20's left is equal to null, so we can't execute this code block. So we move on to the next if, and we check if our right is not equal to null. Since our right is not equal to null, we can call preorder on 20's right subtree. So 30 is now pushed to our call stack, and we print the data 30, which is associated with the current node. Now, we check if our left is not equal to null, and 30's left is equal to null, so we then check if its right is not equal to null, and 30's right is equal to null. So, we pop our 30 off our call stack, because we're finished with this current method or this current stack frame, and we're back at 20. Now, as we remember, 20's left subtree was null, that's why we moved on to 20's right subtree, and we've explored 20's right subtree, we visited 30, and we've printed 30. So 20 gets popped off our call stack because we're finished with that node. Now we're back at 40. And we've visited 40's left subtree. We've explored 20 and 30. But we haven't visited 40's right subtree. So that's what we do right now. 
we check if our Fortis right subtree is not equal to null. And since it's not equal to null, we can call preorder on Fortis right subtree. So 60 gets pushed to our call stack. And we print the data associated with our current node, so we print 60. Then we check if our left is not equal to null. And if 60's left is not equal to null, so we can call preorder on 60's left subtree. So 50 is now pushed to our call stack. And we're back to the start of our method, where we print the data associated with our current node, which is 50. Then we check if 50's left is not equal to null. Well, 50's left is equal to null. So then we check if its right is not equal to null, and 50's right is equal to null. So we've explored its left and right subtrees, so 50 can be popped off our call stack, and we're back at 60. Now, we've visited 60's left subtree, which was 50, but we haven't visited 60's right subtree. So we check if 60's right is not equal to null, and 60's right is not equal to null. So we can call preorder on 60's right subtree. So 70 gets pushed to our call stack, and then we print the data associated with our current node, so we print 70. Then, we check if 70's left is not equal to null, and 70's left is equal to null. So we move on to our next if block, and we check if 70's right is not equal to null, and 70's right is equal to null. So we've explored 70's left and right subtrees, so 70 is popped off the call stack. And we're back at 60. Now, we visited 60's left subtree, which contained 50, and we visited 60's right subtree, which contained 70. So 60's also popped off the call stack. And we're back at 40. Now, we've explored 40's left subtree, which contained 20 and 30, and we've also explored 40's right subtree, which contained 50, 60, and 70. So 40's then popped off the call stack. And we're back at 80. Now, we've explored the entirety of 80's left subtree, but we haven't explored 80's right subtree. So we check if 80's right is not equal to null. And 80's right is not equal to null, so we can call preorder on 80's right subtree. So 120 is then pushed to the call stack. And we print the data associated with our current node, which is 120. Then we check if 120's left is not equal to null. And it's not equal to null. So 100's pushed to our call stack. And we then print the data associated with our current node, which is 100. Then we check if 100's left is not equal to null. And 100's left is not equal to null, so we can call preorder on 100's left subtree. So 90 is pushed to our call stack, and we're back to the start of our method, and we print our 90. So then we check if 90's left is not equal to null. And 90 left is equal to null, so then we check if its right is not equal to null. And 90's right is equal to null. So we've explored 90's left and right subtree, so it can be popped off our call stack. Then we're back at 100. And we've explored 100's left subtree, which contained a 90 but we haven't explored its right subtree, so we checked if 100's right is not equal to null, and it is equal to null. So we're finished with this method, and 100 gets popped off our stack call stack. Then we're back at 120, and we've explored 120's left subtree, which contained 90 and 100, but again we haven't explored 120's right subtree. So we check if its right is not equal to null, and its right is equal to null. So we're done with 120, we've explored its left subtree, and its right subtree is equal to null. So 120's then popped off the call stack and we're back at 80. And finally, we've explored 80's left subtree, and we've also explored 80's right subtree, so we're done with this entire tree. And 80's finally popped off the call stack, and we're done. Now, let's look at in-order traversal. So as we remember, in in-order traversal, think of in-between. So you visit the left, then the root, and then the right. So let's go through this. Now when we call in-order on our root node, our 80 gets pushed to our call stack. Now I'm not going to include the main method in my call stack because I just want to focus on this tree entirely. So in the start of our method, the first thing we do is check if 80's left is not equal to null. And 80's left is not equal to null. So we can call in order on 80's left subtree. So 40 gets pushed to our call stack and we're back to the start of our method. And then again, we check if our left is not equal to null. And 40's left is not equal to null. So we can call in order on 40's left subtree. And 20 is then pushed to the call stack. Then again, we're back to the start of our method, and we check if 20's left is not equal to null. Well, 20's left is equal to null. So we then print the data associated with the current node, which is 20. Then we check if 20's right is not equal to null, and 20's right is not equal to null. So we call in order on 20's right subtree. So 30's pushed to the call stack. Then we're back to the start of our method, and we check if 30's left is not equal to null, and 30's left is equal to null. So we print the data associated with our current node 30. And then we check if 30's right is not equal to null. And if 30's right is equal to null. So we've explored 30's left and right subtrees, so 30's then popped up the call stack. 
and we're back at 20. And we've checked 20's left subtree, and we've also checked and explored 20's right subtree. So 20 is now popped as a call stack as well, and we're back at 40. Now we've explored 40's left subtree, which included 20 and 30, so now we print the data associated with our current node, so we print 40. Then we check if 40's right subtree is not equal to null. And if 40's right subtree is not equal to null, so we can call in order on 40's right subtree. So 60's then pushed to the call stack, and we're back to the start of our method. We check if 60's left is not equal to null. And if 60's left is not equal to null. So we can call in order on 60's left subtree. And 50's then pushed to the call stack. Now we're back to the start of our method. And we check if 50's left is not equal to null. And 50's left is equal to null. So we print the data associated with our current node, which is 50. And then we check if 50's right is not equal to null. And 50's right is equal to null. So we've checked 50's left subtree, we've printed 50, and we've checked its right subtree. And now we're done with 50. So 50 gets popped up the call stack, and we're back at 60. Now we've explored 60's left subtree, so all we have to do now is print 60. And then we explore 60's right subtree. So we check if 60's right is not equal to null. And 60's right is not equal to null. So we can call in order on 60's right subtree. So 70 gets pushed to the call stack, and we're back to the start of our method. We check if 70's left is not equal to null. 70's left is equal to null. So we continue with our method, and we print the current node's data, so we print 70. Then we check if 70's right is not equal to null. And 70's right is equal to null. So we're finished with the stack frame, and 70 gets popped off the call stack. And we're back at 60. Now we've explored 60's left and right subtrees, so 60's then popped off the call stack as well. And we're back at 40. And again, we've explored 40's left subtree, which contained a 20 and 30, and we've explored 40's right subtree, which contains 60, 50, and 70. So we're done with 40, and 40 gets popped off the call stack as well. Now we're back at 80. Now we've explored the entirety of 80's left subtree, so we continue with our method, and we print the data associated with our current node. So we print 80. Then we check if 80's right is not equal to null, and 80's right is not equal to null. So we can call in order on 80's right subtree. So 120 is then pushed to the call stack, and we're back to the start of our method. So now we check if 120's left is not equal to null, and if 120's left is not equal to null. So we call in order on 120's left subtree. So 100 gets pushed to our call stack, and we're back to the start of our method. Then we check if 100's left is not equal to null, and if 100's left is not equal to null. So we call in order on 100's left subtree. So 90's then pushed to the call stack, and we're back to the start of our method again. Then we check if 90's left is not equal to null, and 90's left is equal to null. So we print the data associated with our current node, 90, and then we check if 90's right is not equal to null. And 90's right is equal to null. So we're done with this stack frame, and 90 gets pushed off the call stack, and we're back at 100. Now we've explored 100's left subtree, so now we have to continue with the rest of the method. So we print the data associated with the current node, so we print 100, and then we check if 100's right subtree is not equal to null. And 100's right is equal to null. So we're done with 100, and it gets popped off the call stack, and we're back at 120. And we've explored 120's left subtree, so we continue with the rest of our method, and we print the data associated with 120. So we print 120. And we check if 120's right is not equal to null. And 120's right is equal to null. So we're done with the stack frame again, and 120 gets popped off the call stack, and we're back at 80. Now we've explored 80's left subtree, and we've explored 80's right subtree. So we're done with this method. And finally, 80 gets popped off the call stack. Now you may notice that this binary tree is actually a binary search tree. And as a result, our integer data is actually printed in ascending order. And the reason for this is because of the definition for a binary search tree. All the nodes to the left of a given node are smaller than that node, and all the nodes to the right of a given node are larger than that node. And we're visiting our tree in order, from left, then print the root, and then the right, which is from small to large to largest. So that's why everything is being printed in order. Now, let's look at the last depth research technique, known as post-order traversal. So in post order traversal, as you remember, post means after. So you visit the left, then the right, and finally you visit the root. So let's go through this. When we call post order on our root, 80 gets pushed to the call stack, and then we check if our left is not equal to null. Well, our left is not equal to null, so we call post order on 80's left subtree. So 40 gets pushed to the call stack. And we're back to the start of our method. So we check if 40's left is not equal to null. And 40's left is not equal to null, so we call post order on 40's left subtree. So 20 is then pushed to the call stack. And we're back to the start of our method. Then again, we check if our 20's left is not equal to null. And 20's left is equal to null. So we check if 20's right is not equal to null. 
and 20's right is not equal to null, so we call post order on 20's right subtree, and 30 gets pushed to the call stack. Now we're back to the start of our method again, and we check if 30's left is not equal to null, and 30's left is equal to null, so then we check if 30's right is not equal to null, and 30's right is equal to null. So we print the data associated with our current node, so we print 30. And since we've explored 30's left and right subtrees, 30's then popped off the call stack and we're back at 20. Now we've explored 20's left and right subtrees, so then we continue with the rest of our method, and we print the data associated with our current node, so we print 20. Now we're done with this method, and 20 gets popped off the call stack as well. And we're back at 40. Now we've explored 40's left subtree, but we haven't explored 40's right subtree, so we check if 40's right is not equal to null. And 40's right is not equal to null, so we call post order on 40's right subtree, and 60's then push to the call stack. And then again we're back to the start of our method, and we check if 60's left is not equal to null. And 60's left is not equal to null, so we call post order on 60's left subtree, and 50 gets pushed to the call stack, and we're back to the start of our method again. And finally, we check if 50's left is not equal to null. And 50's left is equal to null. So we check if 50's right is not equal to null, and 50's right is equal to null. So we've explored 50's left and right subtree, so all we do now is print the data associated with our current node, so we print 50. Now since we're done with the stack frame, it gets popped up the call stack, and we're back at 60. So we check if 60's right is not equal to null, and 60's right is not equal to null. So we call post order on 60's right subtree, so 70 gets pushed to the call stack, and we're back to the start of our method. Then we check if 70's left is not equal to null, and 70's left is equal to null. So we check if 70's right is not equal to null, and 70's right is equal to null. So we print the data associated with our current node 70, and 70's then popped off the call stack, and we're back at 60. Now we've explored 60's left and right subtree, so all we have to do now is print the data associated with our current node, so we print 60. Now since we're done with this stack frame, 60 gets popped off the call stack and we're back at 40. Now we've explored 40's left subtree and we've explored 40's right subtree, so all we have to do now is print the data 40. And since we're done with the stack frame, 40 then gets popped off the call stack and we're back at 80. Now we've explored 80's left subtree, but we haven't explored 80's right subtree. So we check if 80's right is not equal to null, and 80's right is not equal to null. So we call post order on 80's right subtree, and 120 is added to the call stack. And we're back to the start of our method again. Now we check if 120's left is not equal to null and 120's left is not equal to null, so we call post order on 120's left subtree, and 100 is added to the call stack, and we're back to the start of our method again. So we check if 100's left is not equal to null, and 100's left is not equal to null, so we call post order on 100's left subtree, so 90 is then pushed to the call stack, and we're back to the start of our method again. So then we check if our left is not equal to null, and 90's left is equal to null, so we check if 90's right is not equal to null, and 90's right is equal to null, so we print the data associated with our current node 90. And then 90 gets popped off the call stack and we're back at 100. Now we explored 100's left subtree, but we haven't explored 100's right subtree. So we checked if 100's right is not equal to null. And 100's right is equal to null. So we print the data associated with our current node, so we print 100. And since we're done with the stack frame, 100 then gets popped off the call stack and we're back at 120. Now we've explored 120's left subtree, but we haven't explored 120's right subtree. So we check if 120's right is not equal to null, and 120's right is equal to null. So we print the data associated with our current node, so we print 120, and then 120 gets popped off the call stack when we're back at 80. Now we've explored 80's left subtree, and we've also explored 80's right subtree. So we continue with the rest of the method, and we print our data 80. And we're done. 80 then gets popped off the call stack, and we're finally done with this method. Now, let's take a look at the complexity analysis for these operations. So for the time complexity, all of these methods are going to take linear time, because we're traversing every single node in our binary tree, which contains n nodes. Now, let's take a look at the space complexity. So in the space complexity, our big O will be in terms of h. And the reason for this is because the number of, or the maximum number of stack frames in our call stack pertaining to each of these methods are going to be based on the height of the tree, or equivalently the depth of the tree. And as we know, we traverse as far down a path as we can before we pop a stack frame off the call stack. If you enjoyed this content, please hit that like and subscribe button. See you in the next video.